God bless you all in the name of Jesus. And I am glad we are all here. I'm sorry it took a little longer. I was um, caught up a little bit with some work, but by the grace of God, we are here. And I thank God that you are here. And I know it's going to be an amazing time in the presence of God. I want you to let somebody know that will let somebody know that will let somebody know that we are alive. And it's going to be an amazing Friday night. We are in Club Jesus. You know? <laughs> Our DJ is the Holy Spirit. So we know he has something lined up for us that will change our lives. So I am excited um, for what the Lord is going to do. I want you to let somebody know because this is such a um, profound message. And the reason why it's profound is because... It is something you will experience and you are already experiencing every day. And if you don't know, you will suffer thinking you are forsaken by God, yet you are not forsaken by God. You will not understand the mind of God. You have to always, and I try to emphasize this as much as I can. Um, God's ways are not our ways and he says it himself. It takes a certain level of comprehension by the Spirit of God to actually understand God. It takes you to truly, truly, truly be touched by the Spirit of God. The Master has to put his finger on you for you to understand God the way he wants to be understood, not what we think he wants to be understood. You see... Our problem in church is this. We have a way we perceive God, but it's not the way God has presented himself. Amen. So there are ways that God has that will completely contradict what you have been taught all your life about God. But it is normal for us to highlight things that look more Christian-like. Because it appeals to our religious psyche, how we think that sounds like God. Mm -hmm. Like when people say, you know, uh, 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 if your prophecy uh, doesn't line up to scripture. Well, the prophecies that people gave before, what scripture did it line up to? You see how we forget. You, you see how quickly people forget. They don't understand that that is not technically the criteria. We all understand what it means to line up by scripture. To line up by scripture doesn't mean I found a verse that says exactly what I said. Most of the people who use that line are actually, I'm sorry to use this word, they are foolish and they are also legalistic because them themselves will say things that are not in scripture. Mm -hmm. But because nobody will sit there and point him out, look, you did this, you said this, you said this. We don't do that because we are too busy doing our assignment. And because we are busy doing our assignment, I am not your prefect or your police to observe you. Even if you make one mistake in how you quote scripture or understand scripture, if your core beliefs of Christ being the Savior, born of a virgin, he died, he rose again. On the third day, he rose again. He's seated in the right hand of the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to heaven except Jesus. Everything else actually doesn't matter. This is why Apostle Paul said this. Apostle Paul said it like this. He said, some became eunuchs by choice. Some were made eunuchs by other men. And others became eunuchs for the sake of the gospel. I'm probably paraphrasing this. But this is what he said. Whether out of envy, whether out of jealousy, I thank God that the gospel is being preached anyway. You know a mature Christian, when as long as Jesus is being mentioned, they know they are winning. That is how a mature Christian is. This is Paul saying it. Amen. He's saying, listen, I know people are preaching for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But the greatest win, it is better for us to talk about Jesus than Muhammad. Yeah. It is better for us to talk about Jesus than Buddha. Yeah. Even if they don't get other things right, yeah, yeah, yeah. the gospel is being preached anyway. Jesus is the way. As long as you say Jesus is the way, I'm cool. That shows spiritual maturity. Why? Because if I point you to Jesus... Yeah. And you genuinely want Jesus. Jesus by his spirit will come to you. Amen. And he will correct the errors that you actually were taught. 
We are not, listen, we are not salvation managers. God, listen, the Bible says, the spirit of God will lead you in all truths. He didn't say your pastor. Because your pastor is human, he can miss it. We are supposed to preach the truth according to our revelation. I can't teach beyond what I know. And sometimes we may try to go beyond what we know and we'll get it wrong. That's fine. It's called growing up. God will correct you. Amen. Same thing. What you believed two years ago is not what you believe now. Revelation is progressive. It's not stagnant. Amen. You know, I know men of God that used to say women don't shouldn't wear pants. Now they don't care their own wives, their own daughters, and they realize it doesn't interfere with God. Amen. Women shouldn't preach. And then you realize a woman is delivering people more than men. The gospel is being preached anyway. You realize it is God who is deciding who is using, not you. So the ways of God are very unique. Because to God, it is not how you do it. It's the end result many times. I want you to pay attention. Many a times, not always, but many a times. There are times I will give you an example. Let me just provoke you completely. If you go to the book, of Sam, uh, the book of Samuel, Samuel is crying because God has rejected him. And he's crying and he's saying, you know, they have rejected me. No, he's saying uh, the nation has rejected him, not God, sorry. And God tells him, stop crying. Don't cry. They didn't reject you, they rejected me. I want you to go to a man called Jesse. Go to his house. I want you to go to Jesse's house. And you're going to anoint a king, I will show you there. Okay, listen to these words carefully. And we can look at it in scripture too. Can you find it for me, Fatih? You, you found it? God bless you. <laughs> uh, uh, can I see the comment? I can't really see how many people are online. I can't see uh, how many likes we have. I can't see anything. Okay, go ahead, Fatih, while she's uh, getting that together. Okay, go for it. Now, I want you to pay attention. Uh -huh. 1 Samuel 16, 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, mm -hmm. seeing I have rejected him from mm -hmm. reigning over Israel? Mm -hmm. Fill thine horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. Notice, Samuel said, mm, I can't go to Jesse's house. If I go and Saul finds out, Saul will kill me. What did God say? And the Lord said, take an heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. That's a lie. <laughs> he said, go and take a youngling and go there and say, Jesse, I have come to sacrifice uh, a youngling to the Lord. But actually what you want to do is to anoint a king. You guys think you know this God, you don't know him. No, I know you, it went over your head. But God doesn't lie though. God is not a liar. God cannot lie. Why? Because God is not under the law. It's his rules. Amen. So God is saying, I want you to go and anoint somebody. I say, mm, Lord, if I go there with them, I'll get killed says, don't worry, uh, get a youngling. Say you have gone to give a sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> Say you are going to sacrifice so that they don't know what you really want to do even though you are going to anoint somebody. Wow. You really think you know God's ways. Uh, I know that just messed up your Christianity. And I'm not telling you go and lie because God doesn't lie. <laughs> No, I'm telling you the truth. God is not a liar. Amen. He's not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. Yeah. Is it in your Bible or did I make it up? It's in the Bible. I can't hear you. It's in the Bible. Are those who are online, is it on the, in the Bible or did I make it up? I want you to type it in the Bible, please. Type it in the Bible. It's in the, it's in Bible. the Bible. So if they attack me, they attack all of us. <laughs> <laughs> not that we care anyway. <laughs> Uh -huh. Can we refresh the, the, the YouTube thing? Uh -huh. are, you, are, you, are, you, are you guys are you guys seeing how strange that is? Today they will say, 
and rightfully so. A man who doesn't lie, a man who doesn't steal, that's a righteous man. But that's not what God considers righteousness. You know that, right? Why doesn't God consider that righteousness? Because you did that by your strength. It has nothing to do with him. Righteousness is believing that Jesus is what Jesus is who makes you stand right, not what you do. So why is it that we measure people? Of course, character is important, but not to God. No, you didn't hear what I said. What pleases God is not character, it's faith. Mm. Amen. And faith means I am relying on God. Yes. I know so many men of God that have good character, but God will never use them. Do you know why? Because they have based their walk with God based on their character. Yeah. And if you look at God's nature, he always picked people with character flaws. True. So, what does this God want? <laughs> because what we think is not and what is not is what he actually... Listen to what God says. He says, uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. God will use those things that everybody thinks whatever about. And that's what he will use to make you see how whatever you are. I don't know if somebody is getting it. Yes. Yes. I, I don't know if somebody is getting it. Yes. Uh, can you write uh, business class? So, so I want you to understand that by the Spirit of God. I, I pray that this makes sense to you and somehow you build to understand it. God sends uh, um, Joshua and them go and spy on the promised land. They come back. They are saved and protected by Rahab the prostitute. She hides them and shows them a way out. Not the good men of the city. A prostitute. Yep. Full on. Yep. Not undercover. Right. Full on. The whole city knows. Hides them. And then releases them. Shows them a way out. When they get to the camp and they give all the good news, they forgot about her. God is the one that is mentioning her. When you get in the city and you take it over, protect Rahab for me. Mm -hmm. She is righteous to me. Yes. Wow. To you, she's a prostitute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, she's righteous. That's good. That's good. This is why it is the most foolish things when I see these little kids. I call them kids because they, are, they may be older in age physically, but spiritually they are children. Mm -hmm. They don't really, for, and this is the crazy thing. How can you serve God for so long yeah. and you still don't understand the patterns of this God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are shouting online talking about righteousness. Ten people watching them. <laughs> Why isn't God increasing how many people are watching you? You are perfect, yet God rejected you. Yes. He has limited your audience. Why is he doing that? You've been preaching 30, 40 years you are the great prophet or apostle or evangelist, whatever it is. But why isn't God increasing your reach? Mm. I'm not saying God hasn't called you. God has chosen you for real. But you have forgotten your assignment. You think you are God. Mm. Because now you're making judgments on behalf of God and not understanding the way God picks people. Yeah. Listen, I should not be in this position. I don't even know how I got to this position. If it was up to people, I wouldn't be sitting here right now like this. Doesn't make any kind of sense. It doesn't make any kind of sense. How many arenas am I filling out? Some people are struggling to fill a hundred people in their church, yeah. but they are busy loud online. <laughs> You're still not understanding. If I'm really good with this God, the Bible says increase comes from the Lord, yeah. but this God has refused to give you increase. Yeah. You see, the thing about God is this. I realized this before we go into what we are actually talking about. This is the thing about God I learned. There are things he won't say. God is very strange like that. There are things he won't correct you. 
He will just let you go through it. It will take you to be wise enough. This is where the prophetic is important because the prophetic makes you be to be analytical. Anybody that says they are a prophet and they are not analytical, they are not a prophet. Amen. That is the primary character of a prophet. A prophet you can have, like I'll give you an example. You see how this cup is here? I know they can't see there. But if it moves just a little bit, even like a smidge, I will know that it moved. Not because I saw it with spiritual eyes. I'm just so sensitive and I have a photographic memory. Anything that is in place, I know where it is. If it moves, I'll also feel that it moved. And if I look, I'll say, you, it's like your OCD. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I don't know. You are obsessed with details. Because with God, you cannot walk close to God if you're not observant of details. Mm -hmm. You miss a detail, it may cost you your own life. Wow. Think about it like this. Moses is with God. God is telling him of the great things he will use him to do. You go to Israel, you go to Egypt, you deliver my people, you do this. Moses comes from the mountain full of glory. He's ready to go set the people free. The Bible says, and when Moses went to his house, God sought to kill him. I was just with you. I was just with you. Can you find it for me, Fatima? Yes, sir. It, it, I was just with you. You are telling me how you have anointed me. You have empowered me. You have made me strong. And I turn my back. I'm going home. The Bible is saying God sought to kill him. So there are people who are speaking to God. They don't know they're on his hit list. Hit list. I am telling you because this is my will, but this other thing you did not observe, I will kill you. Wow. He didn't say, uh, uh, I'm going to punish him, chastise him. He said, God sought to kill. God was looking for a way. <laughs> wow. wow. He is planning good for you, but he also has this thing for you on this side. I am seeking to kill you. The Jesus you worship. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> did you find it? His wife goes to uh, circumcises the son and takes the foreskin and throws it at his feet and says, you are bloody husband to me. Did you find it? Um, I think it's Exodus okay. 24. Okay, let's, let's get it quick. If, if, if it is. Uh -huh. uh, Musa, okay, it's already. And it came to pass by the way in the inn that the Lord met, the Lord met him and sought to kill him. Eh? <laughs> Start from 20. Let's, let's go backwards. Start from verse 20. And Moses took his wife and his son and set them upon an, a donkey. <laughs> and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. He's taking his family. We're going to go set people free. Verse 21. And the Lord said to Mo unto Moses, When thou goest, to return into Egypt, see that thou do all those wonders before Pharaoh. God is telling him, show him my power, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart that he shall not let the people go. Hmm. Keep going. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Mm -hmm. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refusest to let him go, behold, I will slay thy first son, even thy firstborn. So God is making threats to the enemy, telling him how powerful he is, how he must do all that God has shown him, how he must perform. Now look at this, verse 24. <laughs> Did we miss one verse, 23? Oh, we're good. And I say unto thee, let my son go that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay, even, slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Okay, keep going. Verse 24. And it came to pass by the way in the inn. So he gets to a hotel. Imagine you're traveling. You just came from God's presence. You are now traveling. You stop at a hotel, Airbnb. You, your wife, and your son. God meets you there, but you don't know that God. He says God met him there, meaning God went and met him where he stopped. And sought to kill him. I was just with you, and you're looking to kill me. 
He never told him anything because God is like, this guy is not observing my law. Go, go to the next verse. Then Zipporah took a sharp stone. How did Zipporah know? And cut off the foreskin of his son and cast it at his feet and said, Surely a bloody husband thou art, thou art thou to me. Verse 26. So he let him go. Then she said, A bloody husband thou art because of the circumcision. Verse 27. And the Lord said to Aaron, <laughs> Look at this whole time. Who saved Moses' life? His wife. But how did his wife know? Because his wife was a daughter of a priest. She was the firstborn, but she could not take the priesthood because she was a woman. But she still knew the ways of God more than Moses. Just because you are anointed, it doesn't mean there are other people who don't know God more than you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Teaching well. Just because they are not in the front line, or they may be in the front line. You see, the problem with Christians is this. I, am a, I, have, I have been in the prophetic or apostolic ministry for 50 years. Yep. What do you think you know? Eh, I may know way more than you because it's about how much time I've been with him, not how long I've served him. Yeah, Let me explain good. to you something. In the house of God, God gives secrets to his sons, not his servants. Mm -hmm. That's true. Amen. That's true. Serving God for 50 years doesn't mean you've been a son for 50 years. That's good, that's good. Two different things. You can serve me and you know nothing about me because I just hired you. But my son must inherit what I have. You know, there's a teaching about angels. I'm going to do it next week. Okay? Amen. Amen. And I will explain to you why angels don't work with everyone. You know how they tell you everyone has a guardian angel? It's a lie. Angels come to help you and they go, but there are people who live with the angels. Yeah. Angels are with them. They don't depart from them. Amen. Yes. There are people who angels are around them. You can't do nothing. They are with them. 20, you touch them, they touch you. You think of even touching them, they destroy you. There are people like that. Listen to what the Bible says. Are they not all ministering spirit sent to minister to who? What does it mean to minister? The word minister means to serve. Are they not all serving spirits? Sent to serve those who will inherit salvation. Now you need to understand what the word inherit salvation is because it doesn't make sense. Christians are already saved. Okay? Amen. But he's telling you, no, no, no. Angels are not for the saved. Mm -hmm. They are for those who will inherit salvation. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example of somebody who inherited salvation. You know what an inheritance is? Something that was left for you to do with it what you want. Jesus said, my father has given me eternal life and I give it to whoever I want. Do you hear that? Yes. My father has given me eternal life. He has given it to me. Jesus is God. He doesn't need salvation. But he inherited what? Salvation. So angels only follow those who have the ability to get people saved. Those who are carriers of salvation. Amen. Those That's who good. are That's appointed good. to put... Uh, you're not, That's good. Oh, <laughs> those who will inherit it. That's why Jesus tells his disciples this. He said, go into all the world. Whoever you forgive their sin, I will forgive them. No, no, no. Not if they pray to me. That's good. <laughs> Open your ears. Listen to this. Jesus is giving authority to his disciples to forgive sins. Why? Because they have inherited salvation. If I have power to forgive sin, it means I'm also giving you salvation. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's saying, whoever you forgive, they shall be forgiven. Yeah. Whoever you condemn, they shall be condemned. Not it, notice, not if they do wrong. If you decide to condemn them, they are not getting this salvation. Yeah, yeah. Paul, no, Peter chose to condemn Ananias and Sapphira for a lie. For a lie. Him himself, he told a lie, he didn't die. Do you know Jesus? I don't know him. I've never met him. Who? Yeshu? Who? I've never met that guy. Three times. Ananias and Sapphira lie. One time he kills them. He said, you think you are talking to me? Yes, I am talking to you. You are talking to the Holy Spirit. Peter, have you become the Holy Spirit? He didn't say the Spirit of God said to me. He said, you thought you are talking to a man, so you thought you could lie to me. 
And Peter is not wrong. We are one with the Holy Spirit. There's a dimension you get to that you become one with the F Jesus' prayer. Father, let them be one. As me and you are one, let them be one with us. So Peter wasn't wrong. He said, my guy, you are not lying to me. You are not talking to me. You are talking to God. And because you thought it's okay to lie to me, there are two young men outside coming in. They will go and bury you. Killed him. Moses is on the mountain. God says, these people are sinning against me. Move out of the way so I can kill them. Moses said, Lord, you brought them from Egypt. If you kill them, what will the nation say about you? Yeah. Said, okay, go and handle this situation. Moses goes down there and he sees what they are doing. He says, if you're on God's side, come this way. And if you don't want to follow me, go the other way. Do you know what Moses did? He op the Bible says he opened the ground. You could see hell. He took people highway, first class ticket to hell. God wanted to kill them. He said, don't kill them. He goes down and he's shocked. He said, I will kill them myself. <laughs> and God doesn't say nothing. He's the one who kills them. And God pretends he didn't see anything. Uh, God is not your uncle. Amen. Please look at your neighbor and say, God is not your uncle. God is not your uncle. I can't hear you. God is not your uncle. He's not your cousin. He's not your, 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 your grandfather. He's not Uncle Rakas. He's not any of that. He's not your uncle. <laughs> ah, he's none of those things. His ways are just his ways. That is why you find somebody like Jeremiah praying, show me your ancient paths. Meaning, show me your ways before we even you, you created us. Show us your mannerism. Show me how you be. I want to know you are ancient. Meaning, this is time before time. Please show me how you really are. Show me your ancient paths. This is why many get offended by us. Young. God is using greatly. You have mistakes. You have dreadlocks. You have tattoos. Ah, it can't be. Look at how he's talking. He's making mistakes. Of course, I'm going to make mistakes. Who doesn't? Yeah. Okay. Ah, this and this and that and that. But they are wondering. You and all your righteousness. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, they can't even deliver people. We see you struggling with demons. You've never seen us struggling with demons. We can cast out 5,000 at the same time. You, you are struggling with one demon two hours. But you are still talking, not understanding. Your ranking is low. And because you cannot appreciate greater graces than you, God can't lift you because you are already breaking protocol. So this is where now it gets tricky because we are talking about the scales of the spirit. Okay, let's look at this verse quickly. Let's look at this. I know I went on a rant, forgive me. Yeah, am, am I forgiven? Yes. I just like to tell you all the time, God is not your uncle, please. You know? God, God is definitely not your uncle, he's not your cousin, he's none of those things. So as a child of God, you have to be very cautious how you move. Don't, this is why I don't like trends. All these years, the bishop was around. No one was saying the things they are saying. The moment one person said, it's a trend. Everyone has a revelation God told them. That's how many of you will find yourself in hell. Jumping on things you don't know. Even if it is true, it has nothing to do with you. <coughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Leave it alone. Don't bear false witness. Jeremiah 17 from verse 9 to 10. Jeremiah 17, verse 9 to 10. Uh huh. The heart is deceitful above all things mm -hmm. and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Mm -hmm. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Now, listen to that. Read it one more time slowly. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. <laughs> the heart is deceitful above all things. And the heart is deceitful above all things. And, and it is desperate. Do you know what it means? Desperate. Not desires. Desperation makes people do anything. Yes. Desperation makes people do yeah. anything. Very so God is saying your heart. 
Yes. Is actually desperate. You are not desperate, yeah. but your heart is desperate. Wow. It is not only wicked, but it is desperate in its wickedness, meaning it wants to get any way it can mm -hmm. to be wicked. Mm -hmm. Wow. And because that is its condition, God is always searching it and weighing it. Mm. God is always searching and weighing it. When you become a child of God, God begins surgery on you. Mm -hmm. amen. Yes, amen. Because God's desire is to liberate you, not just from demons, which is the smallest thing, the most dangerous thing is a wicked heart. If you look in scripture, the devil did damage on earth. He did evil in the sight of God. Yes. But God never wiped out the earth because of Satan. Mm. If you read Genesis chapter 6, God destroys the earth. Not just because man sinned. It clearly tells you that God saw that the ways of the heart of man was wicked and continually evil in that wickedness. Evil is bad, but wicked is worse. Satan is evil, but man is wicked. Wow. Demons cannot kill demons because it's like killing themselves. Demons cannot attack demons because they don't have desperation for wickedness. They are evil against a group of people. So they have joined together as a body against human beings, but not amongst themselves. Teach him. There are power struggles in the kingdom of darkness, but they always work for one cause. A demon will never make another demon look bad. In fact, they support each other. How do we know it? Jesus says, when a wicked spirit is cast out of somebody, it goes to dry places. What does the demon do? The demon goes to find spirits that are more powerful than itself. Yes, yes. Spirits that are more wicked in, in desire to do evil. Uh -huh. He goes and says, guys, I need help. The Bible says seven spirits will go with him. Do you know what seven is? Completion. We are going to make sure this person never recovers. Yeah. Jesus. So greater demons will hear the plea of the lesser demon and go and support him to destroy somebody. My God. In Christianity, if it. my church is not thriving, come on. The great pastors will not come and help me. Mm. Because their agenda is not to save souls. Their agenda is to be the greatest pastor, yes. uh -huh. not to be the greatest yes. savior. Talking. Amen. Talking, being brother. used by the Lord Jesus. That is wicked, Amen. desperation in wickedness. Yeah. That Christians don't support each other. No. Yes. They can't. Muslims are not real. They support each other. In fact, there's something called Tawhid. They are allowed to lie for the sake yeah. of their religion. Mm. It's true. If you're a Muslim, you know this. I went to Madrasa when I was a kid. It's true. A Muslim doesn't want to argue with me. In fact, some have tried and have put them in their place. You, they delete themselves from my page. They go, they disappear. <laughs> Yeah, because I know it. I grew up amongst Muslims. My mother was half Iranian. I know, I know this thing. Yeah. I went to Madrasa. Yeah. I know what I'm talking about. You are allowed to lie for the sake of, it's true. of the religion. Cover up for. Mm -hmm. wow. It's still bad. Yeah. But it is more of a sign of love and loyalty yeah. than we do. Mm. Whereby if you are my brother. The Bible doesn't even say we are friends. It says we are brothers. If I see you going wrong and the world is attacking you, I will join the world to attack you to show how bad you are and you need to repent. Help. Look at what we just did. We just made the world have authority Help to us. reprimand somebody that is not your servant. Yes. So true. The Bible says you can't judge another man's servant. 
I am not allowed by God. When he called you, I wasn't present. When he anointed you, I wasn't present. Yeah. Yeah. That is why David knew Saul was rejected. But David always called him the anointed of God. Uh -huh. He never, in, what is between him and God is between him and God. Yeah. Me, I cannot fight with him. Yeah. He's the anointed of God. God didn't tell me to fight him. God didn't tell me to do this. I know he's trying to kill me. Mm. Ah, with the age of Facebook and... <laughs> they would have gone. Exposures. King Saul. I won battles for you, but now you want to kill me. God has rejected you. <laughs> they would have been live making videos. It's true. <laughs> You used to be tormented by a demon. I came and I delivered you with my guitar. <laughs> Put X-Files out. That's what they would have done. But David feared God enough yeah. to say, hey, hey, hey. in fact, Saul asked somebody to kill him mm. and to take the crown to David. And the man who killed him and took the crown to David, when he came and said, my Lord, here is the crown. He said, where is Saul? He said, he asked me to kill him. He said, you fool. You should have let him be killed by himself. Because you killed the anointed of God, I have to kill you. Yeah. He said, take him out and kill him. And the guy was killed, yet he was commanded. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's true. Scripture. Yet Saul, God said, I have rejected him. Mm. But notice when Samuel appeared to, to, to him. Do you know what Samuel told him? Tonight you and your sons will dine with me where? In paradise. You eat with me. So Saul is not in hell. Mm. God rejected Man. his leadership, but God never rejected his soul. That's good. Mm. That's good. You're That's helping good. us. So Amen. you may be fighting somebody. Indeed, God may refuse for him to serve him. Ah, but the soul. God doesn't. You see, God doesn't. Christians, the issue is many of the people who are preaching have no hell experience. They have never seen heaven. They have never seen hell. They have never met God. They just preach over God. They have felt they are convicted by, but they have never seen him. They don't understand the passion of God for souls. That God, listen to Paul. Paul is, is judging, okay, from a distance. He says, listen, I've already judged among you that the guy who has committed this wicked sin of taking his father's wife is done a wicked thing. When you guys gather together to pray, my spirit will come and join you. I will take him and deliver him to, to the devil. Yep. For the destruction of his flesh, but the salvation of his soul. Uh -huh. He didn't say this guy, they already determined this guy is not repenting. Yeah. Paul said, but don't worry. I will give him to Satan to die, but so that we can save his soul. Yeah. Yet the guy is taking his father's wife. He is laying with her. Wow. The guy dies and still goes to heaven. Wow. <laughs> you guys don't know this God. Wow. <laughs> he is not saying the sin was good. Yeah. But Paul found a way still to get this guy yeah. to heaven. Yeah. Then you will see somebody making one mistake. You're saying, in fact, he's a false prophet, he's a wizard, he's a warlock. How do you know? Because you see, also they change titles every day. One day I am a wizard. The next day I'm a high-ranking warlock. The next day I'm a Freemason. Guys, you can't be that spiritually talented. <laughs> and not, you can't join every sect. Spiritual things don't work like that. But I know you think like that because one day you wake up, you're an apostle. The next day you wake up an evangelist. <laughs> it is your mindset. So you think it's like that, yet it's not like that. Come on here. <laughs> uh, if you can hear me, just let me see fire emojis. Let's, let's get some fires oh, going. Fire. fire. <laughs> Listen to this. This is 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5. 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5. To deliver such unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Saying, I'm going to kill him. He's sinning. I'll kill his flesh, but we'll save his soul. Stop listening to these small boys. Amen. Stop it. And even if they speak, actually, let me correct that. Father, forgive me. Don't stop listening to them. Because they are serving God. I'm not saying they are not men of God. I'm not saying they are not women of God. But choose what to go with. When they talk about Jesus, take it. When they talk about people, reject it. Amen. Learn how to separate the Amen. wheat from the chaff. Amen. Separate it. Because they are saving people. Some people are actually coming to Jesus through that. Yeah. The gospel is being preached anyway. 
I won't be like them to say, don't listen to us. No, I'm not going to do that. I'll be a fool if I say that. The goal is for people to go to heaven. Amen. But you have to be wise enough to see. Guys, come on. You are talking about the same thing, but the guy is still preaching. Jesus said, nah, there's something off here. The problem is they are teaching you to go with your feelings and not to go by God's voice. That's good. That's good. Yeah, I always felt something is wrong. You also felt like you married right. And you got divorced. You also felt like that was the one and it wasn't the one. You also felt like that was the right career. Then you discovered it wasn't. We move by you're faith, helping. not by sight. Amen. I, I don't know if I'm being wicked today. I feel you're helping. You're helping Go ahead, us. Papa. So, so hear me them. by the spirit of God. I, I'm, I'm going to finish soon. Amen. Their heart is desperately wicked. I, the Lord, what does he do? Search the heart. I search the heart. I try the reins. I try the reins. Do you know what it means to try the reins? God will put you on a scale. Mm. Mm. And when God puts you on a scale, every Christian, mm -hmm. you're already on a scale. Mm -hmm. Wow. For everything you desire from God and whatever you want to be in the presence of God, you will be put on a scale mm. if you can get that reward. If you are heavier than what you want, then it is yours. Mm. If it is heavier than you, then you don't qualify for it. Mm. God will put you through things that you will gain weight for you to be able to earn it. That's good. That's wow. good. Amen. That's good. So God will try you. What does that mean? God will try you. Do you know why you've been trying to break generation curses and not breaking? Because it wasn't a curse. You're on a scale. Help us. Help us. Help us. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> if you pray, like uh, uh, yes, the day before yesterday, I taught about, uh, um, uh, what was it called? What was the message I taught? I can't even remember. In the, in the Sounds in the blood. In the blood. What demons struck in the blood? I taught you how to break blood curses. Yeah. Simple. I don't know how many comments I got on, on, on Instagram. I think we should post it on YouTube also. How many comments I got on Instagram of people saying, man, I prayed the prayer. I, I threw up blood. I, I mm. fell down. Demons came out of me. So many people got delivered. Wow. Simple Hallelujah. prayer. There was no fire and brimstone. There was no, you demon. No, there is a time for that. There was nothing. It was the simplest prayer. But the effect of it, because God is in it. Hallelujah. Okay. But now watch this. Please capture this. If you are commanding a demon to go and it doesn't go, I'm not saying always. If you are in Christ, and I will show you how to know if you're on a scale. If you're being tried by God. And that thing doesn't move. You have to understand that it's God that placed it there. Amen. Because God says it like this. Jesus said, Whosoever shall speak to this mountain and tell it to move and throw itself in the sea, it will obey you. Yes. Why isn't this thing obeying me? And Jesus did not say you need fullness of faith. He said if you have faith like a mustard seed. You have to remember, Jesus was not commending a mustard seed faith. He was actually rebuking it. But he was saying that even if you have that little, you should move mountains. Amen. Amen. Even though he's not calling you to have a mustard seed kind of faith. People take mustard seed to mean that it's the biggest tree with the smallest seed. That was not what Jesus was not saying about how the tree was going to become big. He was talking about a seed. He was comparing seeds. Amen. Mm, amen. He was not comparing the harvest. So pay attention. He was comparing seed. You see, if your faith is this small, it can move mountains, even though I don't want you to have this kind of faith. Yeah. So you tell me you had enough faith to receive salvation. Come on, the Papa. greatest miracle yeah. is salvation. You never got a com confirmation email. <laughs> you never got a receipt. True. To confirm that you are saved. True. But when you said it, you said, I know I'm going to heaven. Heaven is my home. What is convicting you? Mm -hmm. Faith. Mm. 
you are saved by grace through faith. 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 It's faith that saved you. Your confidence is the faith. Don't you understand that that faith gave you eternal life? Nothing is bigger than eternal life. Amen. Why not why is nothing bigger than eternal life? Something that eternal cannot be measured, cannot be weighed. You cannot figure out its dimensions because it has no beginning, it has no end. So your faith was able to get you something called impossible. Mm. That's good. Amen. Now when you come to the realm of men, a situation is minute. It's like an atom in the presence of what you have. It is too small. A mountain is a small thing. But if I'm talking to that mountain, huh? mountain you must move. Yeah. And it's not moving. Mm, you need to start asking. Wow. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Jehovah Sneaky, are you behind this? <laughs> because when God, I call him Jehovah Sneaky when he's going behind the background and doing some stuff, now you start checking, is that you, Lord? Because God can be so undercover and you don't know that it's God. Yes. Job understood he was put on a scale. Job was put on a scale. But because he knew God, because he understood God, Job had a different approach. He went on his knees and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked will I go back. Praise be to the name of the Lord. The Bible said, and he fell down and worshipped. Why was his first instinct to worship? Job understood where I am in the spirit. Nothing can touch me unless he's touching me. Amen. That's good. Come on. He did, not, he did not say, I am beyond touching. Yeah. He knew. That's why his wife came and told him, cast God and die. He said, shall I only accept blessing for him and not chastising or cursing? Mm. Will I only accept good from him? Notice he knew God could do bad. <laughs> are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, yes. But you have been programmed by deliverance ministries. I don't believe in deliverance ministries, by the way. It doesn't exist. There's only five offices, that's it. There's no division called deliverance. Yet I do deliverance more than most. Because casting out demons is not deliverance. It's called casting out demons. Deliverance is by the word of God. You shall Amen. know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. So you only become free when you have the word. Amen, that's good. Not because somebody rebuked something out of you. That's why we have people who got deliverance and they're ignorant of scripture. Thinking everybody has a demon. You have tattoo, you have a demon. You, why are you dressing like the world? Well, are you dressing like an angel? Last time I checked, angels are wearing robes. Amen. <laughs> Maybe your clothes is not Gucci. Maybe it is not Nike, but definitely it was made in Thailand or China. <laughs> it was still made on earth. So you're not dressed like heaven. Come on. Why are you looking like the world? Well, you look like the world too. You're human. What do you mean looking like the world? <laughs> Help us. Yet they think that it's an external thing, yet it is an internal thing. Mm. The Bible says, let your adorning not be of the outward man, but of the inward man. Yeah. You are supposed to be recognized because of what is inside, not Come what on, is outside. Papa. Amen. So why is everybody saying, oh, that one doesn't look like a pastor? No. Let me see what he can deliver. Come on. Amen. Let me see what she can produce. Amen. Let me see what he can produce. Yes. Not, not let me see how he looks like. John the Baptist looked like a bum. <laughs> he looked like a street beggar. He was a wild man. Lived in the wilderness where there is no water. So maybe he, was, he wasn't smelling very well. He was a hairy man that just showed up and when you saw him, he was just shouting and then he left. (laughs) 
But if the people of the day who are looking at the Pharisees who had robes and garments when they stood, shalom, shalom, you say, wow. <laughs> this John guy, something is wrong with him. And Jesus said, I came hanging out with sinners. You said I have a demon. John came not eating, not drinking, not hanging out yeah. with people. He's in the Come wilderness. On. You said he's also have a, has a demon. So who is really having a demon? Come on. John has a demon, yet he didn't do what I'm doing. I'm doing this other thing. It's better you would have even said John doesn't have a demon. But you see why they were judging this way. External, not looking at what the spirit can deliver. Yes. The content of the spirit is lacking. So how do I know that God is putting me on a scale? All and when God puts you on a scale is because he is ready to reward you. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is not putting you on a scale to judge you. Mm -hmm. God is putting you on a scale so that he can perfect you. Amen. God is putting you on a scale so that he can build you. Amen. God is putting you on a scale so that he can increase you. God is putting you on a scale so that he can transform you. He's Amen. doing these things because what he wants to do in you, for you, and through you, it will take him himself to mold you. So what God will do is he will put you on a scale. What is the sign that you are on a scale? Let me see how honest you are. <laughs> let's see how honest you are remember when you were not really saved yes life was really good right yes money was flowing right <laughs> I let, talk to me guys that's true okay let me talk to the people online uh, let's keep sharing we are, we are almost at 5,000 we are supposed to go beyond that uh, and get more likes up can we refresh it please so, so hear me by the spirit of God right Life was good, right? Yes. There was no financial struggle, really. Relationships were going well. The family was not divided. Mm. Things were cool. You give your life to Jesus, all hell breaks loose. <laughs> Everything that could be wrong, you start saying, was it a mistake to get saved? The moment you give your life to Jesus, your husband doesn't want you anymore. Mm. The moment you give your life to Jesus, your wife doesn't want you anymore. Your children change. Everything starts going crazy. You are being fired from a job that you've been doing so well. Everyone is planning. All of a sudden, you're like by yourself. It's like, yeah. Then your pastor will say, oh, it's bloodline curses. They should have been working even if I was in the world. Curses work whether you're in the world or not. I know people who are under a curse in the world. You, you came to Christ. You thought you would get a relief. You realize it got worse. Can we be real? Yeah. Yes. yes. If that's you, wave your hand in the air. Honest. Uh -huh. Shaba. <laughs> I feel it. Shando. <laughs> it's real. You had no problem with people wanting to be in a relationship with you. You used to reject them. Now no one wants to even look you away. No, it's true. It very true. It's like, what is going on? Yeah. Friends that used to be cool with you, all of a sudden they want nothing to do with you. Yep. They're the ones gossiping about you. Come on. Many of you think the devil is angry. Who cares if the devil is angry? He's a defeated foe. Yeah. So his anger means nothing. Amen. But we have, as believers, <laughs> look at how brainwashed we are. The devil is angry, he's not happy. So what? You have been taught that if the devil is angry, things go bad. Mm. Tell me when the devil was not angry. Mm. <laughs> he's been angry from the day he was kicked out of heaven. Amen. There is no day that he was happy smiling. He has nothing to smile about. He has nothing to be happy about. He's, he's, the lake of fire is waiting for him. In fact, the Bible tells you the devil has anxiety. Mm. How do we know this? The Bible says the devil is working really hard because he knows his time is short. Yeah. It means the guy has no rest. Yeah. He's anxious. He doesn't know when the lake of fire is coming. Yeah. 
So there is no day the devil is happy. He's cranky 24-7. So to say, oh, the devil is really angry. is foolish. He's always upset. I have never met a happy demon. I've never encountered a demon that was like, who I'm happy today. <laughs> I'm so good. You know what I'm saying? It was a good day. Really? Yeah. Come out. Ah, now I'm angry. How could you? <laughs> hey, Christians. <laughs> I've never met a happy demon. I've seen happy gangsters. <laughs> I've seen happy mafia people. I've even met people who are usually stone-faced. You can even make them break a smile and then they get back to character. Look at Kanye. <laughs> they still smile. I have never seen a demon smile. I've never seen a demon happy. I've never seen anything like that. So where did we come up with this concept, the devil is really angry? When was he not angry? The Bible says, I have given you power to trample over serpent and over scorpions. And by no means will they harm you. So it doesn't matter whether he's happy, angry. He has no power to harm me. Amen. Amen. So why amen. do I care about how he feels? Yeah, amen. Why has that become part of my checklist? Did I make the devil angry? When you get saved, you defeat the devil. He has no right to be angry because he's still lost. Yeah. So to think that because you got saved, the devil is, I know. When you get saved, the devil cries because he has lost. Amen. So now watch this. Everything went wrong because God began to work on showing you your own heart. Mm. He knows it, but you need to also know it so you can change. Amen. Sometimes I'm very hard on my sons and daughters. I can be hard. And hey, there's no one I've hammered more than Esther. <laughs> hey, Esther Rosa suffered in this life. <laughs> ah, she has suffered. If she actually went online and said, Prophet did this to me, <laughs> it could be valid. <laughs> ah, Esther has suffered. Ah, because my daughter carries too much. No, it's true. Amen. Yeah, she's, she's you know, she's a media lead and taking care of everything now. Me, I watch like I'm a perfectionist. There is no service, whether I'm in church or not, whoever preaches, whatever is good. I analyze everything. I have to see what happened in order to know where it needs to be improved, where it needs to be changed. I look at everything. At 3 a.m. I will call her, Esther, why is this like this? Why did this get done like that? Why would this get... In London, she almost had a heart attack. <laughs> But I don't do that because I hate Esther. I actually love her the most because even now to the point that when other people get things wrong that has nothing to do with her, she's the one who gets it. Amen. The, but she's getting it not because I'm actually upset with her. She's understood that she has become so close to me yeah. that I can pour my heart to her so that she can go and tell these guys to get things right. Amen. Amen. Another one that gets it like that is Lee. Musa gets it. He's actually simmered a little bit. But everyone that if you become, I will, because I want people to grow. None of, listen, everyone that started with me, every one of them, their lives have improved. Amen. This is a fact. Amen. This is a fact. Every one of them have homes. No, they are not renting. They have bought homes. Amen. They have Amen. their families. Amen. Every one of them. Uh, your clapping is full of jealousy. 
All of them. In fact, when they do things that are a shift of life, I myself am the first one to contribute to them achieving it. Amen. Because my desire is to always see my people do the best, the greatest. That's my nature. It's true. That's my nature. That's how I am. So, God begins to put more on you because he wants you to be heavier. Mm. You're teaching well. I, I wish somebody could hear <laughs> teaching me. teaching well. God begins to put more on you. You used to be like this. He begins to lean on you. It begins to press on you. You start feeling like there is so much pressure on you. No, God is laying on you to tip the scale. Come on, hallelujah. So That's that good. things in your life, I feel like I'm talking no, to no, myself. No. You're talking, you're teaching. So when the pressure increases, God is putting his own hand to tip the scale. First, God shows you where you are missing it. That's why Paul said it like this. I will glory in my weaknesses so that the power of what? God may rest. There's the presence of God coming on you and there's the presence of... Uh, this is me sitting with my son here. This is me resting on him. Amen. Resting, it means I have put my weight on yes. him. Is, is somebody getting this? Do you know why, why uh, uh, if you've ever participated in a funeral and you carried a casket, they call it dead weight. And we say, oh, we are taking them to their resting place because this person is in the sleep called death. Mm -hmm. All their weight, they have, man carrying a casket is not easy. It's extremely heavy. Why? Dead weight. The person is resting, completely rested. So the number one sign that God is beginning to work on you is the day you got saved, chaos started. Mm. The day you decide to improve your prayer, you thought problems would end, problems increased. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Come on. You are on a scale. You should be rejoicing. Amen. Hallelujah. You can clap better for Jesus. Hallelujah. I said you can clap better for Jesus. You should be rejoicing. You should be rejoicing. Job rejoiced. He was painful, but he rejoiced because he knew the present suffering will not compare to the glory that is to come. Amen. Every time before somebody is glorified, They have to suffer. You have to be put on a scale. Jesus walked on the earth. The earth never gave way. When he was put on the cross, the earth broke. He tipped the scale and broke hell. He outweighed hell. That's good. That's good. That's good. I wish you could see what I'm saying. He literally outweighed hell. Imagine all the souls that went to hell, even the souls that went to paradise, had no power to tip the scale. Jesus going on the cross tipped the whole scale that the ground broke. Even the old saints came out of the graves. When he was alive, he could only raise individuals. When he died, he raised everybody. Yeah. That's good. The Bible says, to the faithful who? Noah. From the day of Noah to the time of Jesus. This is why I was laughing at, you know, I always, I'm sorry to say this. It's just funny to me. It's just so funny to me. When people haven't seen heaven and you want to talk about heavenly things that you have not seen. But even if you use logic, let's use logic for a second. For all those who tell you there are more people in hell. It's a lie. I, some foolish person said, well, the Bible says hell enlarges itself. Just because the clothes change does not mean the person wearing them changed. Come on. Come on. Use common sense. Hell enlarges itself, okay? 
Fine. So does it mean because it enlarged, it means more people inside? Let me show you an example. Let's do math. From the time of Noah, I'm not giving specific numbers, even though I've done a research with specific, almost specific numbers. From the day of Noah, that's when God began to judge sins dramatically. Okay? From the day of Noah to the time of Jesus is about 2,000 years, I believe. Two or 3,000 years, roughly. I'm not sure, but if you look at it, you will see it. Let's just hypothetically say 2,000 years okay, to the time of Jesus. Jesus lives for 33 and a half years. Okay? Jesus dies. The Bible says he went into hell and preached to the souls and brought those who were in hell. We are not just talking about paradise. Yeah. Those who are actually condemned. It says he preached to the condemned souls in hell. From the day of the faithful Noah, whereby disobedience the flood took them. Yeah. So you imagine 2,000 years worth of souls in hell yeah. were removed in an instant. Yeah. No, 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 I want you to hear. We are not counting those who are in paradise. We are talking about those who are in hell. From the day of the faithful Noah to the time of Jesus, every one of those souls was taken out. The Bible said it, I didn't. Okay? Jesus goes to heaven. Now we have apostles, prophets, evangelists, and teachers. Remember, before Noah and after Noah, there were not as many churches as we do have now. There's not as many, the, the gospel is not, was not being preached as, there was no gospel. Okay? There's more preachers now. There's more evangelists now. There are more people preaching to masses. Online right now, we have 5,000 people watching now. By the time this video is done, within 10, 15 hours, it will be like over 60,000 people watched it. So Amen. there are more people reaching people in different, in convenient ways. Amen. So you imagine from the time of Noah to the time of Jesus, everybody is taken out of hell. Hell starts over again. People are falling into hell. Okay. But now we have people preaching the gospel. People giving their life to Christ. So the ratio now from the time of Jesus to now, it's 2,000 years and some change. Okay. But this 2,000 years block now has people actually preaching and people being saved. So if you compare the number of people in hell and the people in heaven, heaven has way more souls than people in hell. Hallelujah. Now, to us who are in Christ, one soul lost is too many because Jesus came for every soul. So it is okay to preach hell dramatically because hell is not a good place. Nobody should go to hell. But to tell people that there are more Christians in hell, in fact, there is no Christian in hell. If you go to hell, you're not a Christian. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. How can, I, how can somebody saved by Christ end up in hell? No, you are pretending to be a Christian. Mm. Because hell was made for the devil and his guys. Right. And those who follow him, not Christians. Christians go to heaven. Are you hearing me? Yes. Now you think about it. There are more souls in heaven than there are in hell. Because if hell has more souls than heaven, then God has lost the battle. God lost. No, God lost. Can we be real? Amen. God lost. Amen. If hell is winning, if Satan has more people to go down with, God lost, heaven lost. But that's not true. We know God will never lose. God cannot lose. So one soul lost is too many. It's too much. Because Jesus bled for that one soul. He gave his life for that one soul. So one, lost, one soul lost is, is too much for the Lord. It's too much for us who love him. But let's not preach lies. Amen. Let's not preach lies. Amen. Please, let's not preach lies. Yes. This is just simple math. Simple math. Simple math. And let me tell you something. It's actually very difficult for a Christian to go to hell. Mm. One day we'll talk about this. Amen. I just gave you an example. A man 
took his father's wife. Paul is saying we will give up his flesh for the destruction of we will give up we will give I will give him up to Satan for the destruction of his flesh but the salvation of his soul. The Bible even goes as far as to say that your spouse will be purified because of you. If you are the Christian and they are still resisting God because they are married to you they will be purified. Why don't we talk about these things? This doesn't mean it's okay to sin. You see, the problem with legalistic people is they like mind control. Mm. They want you to be in fear. Yet to be in Christ is to be free. Amen. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. When Moses left Egypt, no hoof was left behind. No animal, even a single animal was not. When God delivers, he delivers everything. Yeah. Amen. I, are you hearing me? When Moses brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, do you think every Israelite believed in God? But they all were delivered. It's true. Amen. No, you didn't hear what I'm saying. They all were freed. Because God will not destroy a whole nation, even if there is five righteous. Amen. That's good. This is just truth. If you don't like it, take it up with God. Amen. Not me. <laughs> so how do we know we are in a scale when I have given my life to Christ and things go bad? I'm on a scale. Then you'll notice things become normal again. Things are going. You go to an anointed church. <laughs> things go wrong. Mm -hmm. People start telling you that church is full of witchcraft. That's why things are not working. They are lying to you. Satan is using them to remove you from the scale. Woo. You're teaching. You're helping. Elisha. Elisha is given help by a woman. Okay, he's given help by the woman. The woman builds a room for him. Elisha blesses the woman with a son. Okay? Blesses the woman with what? A son. He keeps traveling and passing by the same house. Him living at that house, the young boy dies. <laughs> in the house, Elisha who gave life, in the house he's in, the child dies. The woman comes and says, you brought your holiness in this house, now my child is died. He says, give me the boy. He takes the boy upstairs and brings him back to life. In fact, he complained to God. He said, Lord, how can I be here? You take this boy's spirit. Please give back this boy's spirit. Now, there's a reason why God did it. And he knew that he would bring him back. But there's something God was trying to prove. Lazarus is Jesus' best friend and Jesus leaves him to die. And then comes to raise him. So being close to the anointing doesn't always mean you get life when you want it. Come on. Yeah. Come on, Come on you're helping, you're helping. Amen. Sometimes people get disappointed because I don't prophesy to you because you came. Mm. I prophesy to you because God told me to talk to you. Come on. Amen. If the angel of the Lord tells me go to you and speak to you, that's when I'll do it. I won't do it just because I, I feel like it, even though I can prophesy when I feel like it. But if God is not moving me, I won't move. I just can't move. I'm, I'm not serving myself. Oh, I went to that church. He, 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 he didn't minister to me. <clears throat> I'll never go back. Nothing changed for me. <laughs> Absolutely nothing changed for me. Nothing at all. And somebody else will fill that space. The church is a hospital. Amen. Amen. The turnover rate should be high. Should be because we are equipping people. They go out, save souls. Others come in. That's how it should be. But Satan is a master at removing you in the process of God. Yeah. Mm. So disappointment will come when God is fixing you. Come on. Then you'll come and whisper, you see, you see, you see, because he knows you don't know you're on a scale. Mm. Come on. He will whisper to you, mm, I told you this house wasn't good. Do you see how it's always dark? <laughs> yeah, just... I don't know, man. Be careful. I don't want to say much. <laughs> yeah. Then 
you start now looking for bad things and you will see what you want. Yes, it's true. Amen. You know, there's a, a, um, there's a, I was watching this TED talk, right? And this man was showing how human beings are, are, are easily manipulated. It's called TED talk. Yeah, TED, TED talk. talk. Yeah. And he was like, he was a psychologist. He said, there are two dots and he showed two dots on the screen. He said, can you pay attention? They were looking. And he said, the left one is bigger than the right. They were like, oh, actually true. How do you know? Yeah, it's like bigger by this much, this much, this much. I said, you see, I made you believe that they are actually the same exact size. So if you want to see things good, you will see them. If you want to see bad things, you also see them. Amen. Then you just say, you know, in my spirit just didn't sit right. So, you know, when I saw this, it just confirmed what I felt that didn't sit right. Maybe it was a demon manifesting in you. You know when demons are in people, they make you hate people that are supposed to deliver you. Amen. How many Amen. people have you seen a, a person that is cute, cute, nice mama, old mama, all of a sudden would turn into a monster. Get away from me. And then when they're free, they're saying, when you're coming close to me, I just felt anger and I hated you. But I don't know. And I'm asking myself, why am I hating you? I don't even hate you. Then I blanked out and then I just found myself here. Why? Sometimes what you feel, it is the demon. Yes. That has been speaking to you. Jesus is in the house and, and, and the lady comes and starts crying at his feet, kissing his feet, wiping it with her hair, pouring the oil. The guy said, if this guy was a prophet, he would have never done this. Jesus said, why have you allowed the devil to poison your mind? Why are you allowing this kind of thoughts to go through you? I came into your house. Notice Jesus could go and say quickly, you are, the devil is trying to poison you. Peter, I walk thee behind me, Satan. You don't like the things of God. He knew. Yet Jesus saying, I will die, didn't sit well with Peter. He didn't sit well. He didn't want Jesus to die. It didn't sit well, but it wasn't God's plan. The Bible says it pleased him to bruise him. It pleased God. So hear me by the Spirit of God. When you go to an anointed place, God will test you to see if your spiritual capacity can withstand the growth you're about to enter into. Amen. Amen. When Elisha was anointed by Elijah to follow him, Elijah put him through a test. Elijah tried to lose him many times. The man chose to be a servant, not because Elisha, Elijah asked for a servant. Elijah did not want any servants because he knew whoever serves him will take what he has. And he was the last of his kind. You have to understand this. Elijah was the last of his kind. Mm -hmm. How do we know this? When he was in the cave, the Lord comes to him. He said, Elijah, what are you doing here? He said, Lord, all the prophets are dead. They are all dead. But if you remember, there was a man who was feeding prophets in a cave. Mm -hmm. But notice, whenever the Bible refers to those prophets, it calls them sons of prophets. Where were their fathers? They were dead. Elijah was the last of that kind. He was the last of that breed. But that generation was so bad because their fathers could leave them nothing. You teach him. That Elijah was the last of the kind, but only Elisha chose to serve. Yet the man is putting him through loops. He's telling him, God is about to take me. What do you want? I want this. He still tries to lose him more. He gives him even a more impossible task. Elisha literally had to sleep with one eye open. Because Elijah can just get up and disappear. I have to stay on this guy. He was tested to see if he's worthy of what he's asking for. When you want to go to a prophetic church... In the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 14, Paul calls it the best gift. 
the benefits all. You want to be part of the greatest movement of God. Because the prophetic is the only office that announces Jesus. Amen. It announced his coming. It announced his coming in the flesh. And it will announce his coming again. Amen. Amen. That's why it's the greatest. It's the, you have no prophet, you don't know if he's coming. It's really that simple. You want to be part of what God is doing. Amen. But before you join that, the Lord will test you. Are you worthy of the unction you desire? Mm. He will allow them to talk against your apostle, your prophet, your evangelist. Demonize them to see if you are going to go by what people say or will you see what God deposited. Amen. Amen. Mm, God would check your loyalty level. Amen. Because the worst thing is that God giving you a gift and then you, yes. you change. Yes. And his gifts are without repentance. Amen. So that's trouble. Yes. God can't allow that. Amen. God can't allow that. Amen. So whenever you join a house that is of power, know that you'll be tested not by the devil, by God himself. If Amen. you actually belong. Amen. 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 If you actually belong. My sons and daughters that have been with me, like Esther, they've been with me some 12 years, some 9 years, some 10 years. Never changed, they've been there. The only people that we've seen change is those who come, oh, Papa, Lord, I love you so much. Oh, Papa, I love you. I just give them a little distance. Mm -hmm. You never see them again. Yeah. Because Amen. they wanted proximity with the man, not with the spirit of God. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. They changed. Ah, you know, I used to like him, but ah. you used to be Papa. You turn into prophet. Then you just turn into Lovi. <laughs> you just watch them. You realize this is why you were never brought close. Mm. I put everyone through that. You will see me and then all of a sudden you can't find me. Amen. <laughs> Mike knows. <laughs> he just changed his number. I don't know how to get. <laughs> if I become naked, are you going to hang me out or are you going to cover me? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. So God will check if you can be part of that unction that you desire. That's good. Number three. When God wants to release a higher dimension for you, he will strip you of what you knew. Mm -hmm. He will strip you of what you have. And put you on a scale and dress you differently. Amen. That is why many times when your dedication to God increases, troubles increase. It's not actually trouble. It is him causing you problems. <laughs> because he wants you to grow. Amen. I remember a story that um, one of my favorite apostles Apostle Johnson Suleiman, a father in the faith. His spiritual father was the great Idaosa, the father of fathers. And they went to see him because he kind of discerned that his time was close. And he started laying, and they, he asked them, what do you want? Ah, Papa, we want to be used by you. He said, okay, kneel. He put his hands on them and said, Father, give them trouble. They say, hey. <laughs> he said, you want what I have? Trouble made me. Jesus was glorified because he suffered even unto the suffering of death. If you're not ready to be stripped, you're not ready to tip the scale.
This is why it is the same kind of lesson you're going through. It's not changing. Because God is trying to fix one area and you're not letting him. So you will keep repeating that lesson. He will give you a break, repeat it again. Give you a break, repeat it again. You're not going high. You are just getting repetition of the same thing over and over until you realize you say, mm, mm, mm. then things change. Without that, same thing. Get to a place. That you understand that your life is hidden in Christ, in God. Amen. Listen to me. Your life is hidden in Christ, in God. I'll say that one more time. Your life is hidden in Christ, in God. I'll say that one more time. Your life is hidden in Christ, in God. So if your life is hidden in Christ, in God... No one can touch you unless it is Christ touching you. Amen. Amen. To start the process and to expedite it, understand that it is him. If you can genuinely start looking and saying, ah, Father, whatever you want, do it. We all like preaching. You're coming out. Sometimes you don't. Yeah. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you absolutely don't. He will keep you there for a period so that when you come out, you are a giant. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it's not always healing now. Sometimes he will keep you sick. Not unto death. But the Time you are mastered the anointing to destroy those yokes, you will heal so many people because unless Amen. you have gone through something, you don't qualify to cure it, to fix it. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus can give life because he gave up his life. Amen. The Bible says it like this. It says, we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by our infirmities. Meaning what you have gone through is gone through. So he's the best representative. You want to be the first billionaire in your family, yet you can't stand being broke. Because if you are the one who is going to change it, you have to taste the bottom of the bottom. Amen. Amen. My, my little brother, UJ, is here. Prophet uh, Hubert Angel, the son. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My prophet and father, his son is here. Hear me by the Spirit of God. When the last time he was in LA, I saw you are eight or nine years old. Eight. He was eight years old. He was eight years old, so minus eight. That's when I met UJ physically. And I remember serving his father. And then I went to Houston to minister to his father. He was back in England. And I went to see his dad and I had nothing. I had stopped working on music because God wanted me to serve him. I will never forget this. I only had $3,000 to my name. $3,000. I went to the bank, got them in dollar bills. The, the guy at the counter was like, oh, you're about to go have fun. I was like, yep. <laughs> he thought you were, I was going to a certain house, which I've never been to, by the way. I don't see the appeal or the point, but Amen. never seen it. But So I'm getting this dollar, 3,000 in dollar bills. Then I took a few of them and I told them, can you make these hundreds? And then they gave me hundreds. Do you know what I did? Put hundred on top, hundred on, on the bottom, hundred on top, hundred on the bottom. So I had a little bag, put it on my backpack, got on a flight, whew, went to see him. Reverend Titus was his assistant at that time. And I'm with and and the prophet always allowed me to be in his room out of everybody else. 
why God just favored me. He knew what God was going to do. And I'm in the room with him. It was my opportunity. No one was there. He was in the bed. I had just, he had, um, whenever he preached, after he preached, I would take uh, um, oil and I would massage his feet because he would minister for a long time. I just employed myself. He said, I love you. You should just go with me to UK. I said, Dad, Dad, I can't go to UK now and stuff. It's like, okay, okay. So I would massage his feet. Listen, I paid my dues, guys. Listen, Amen. I paid my dues. I used to iron his clothes. I used to prepare his underwear. I used, he does, not because he doesn't have people who do that. Ricky was traveling with him. But I would do that. I would, I would pre going to get his food. I know he eats, bar he, eats uh, he loved grilled meat. No barbecue sauce. Coca-Cola is his drink. You get him anything else, you're in trouble. I, know, I knew him to the T. Whatever he wants, I knew how he would want it, his handkerchiefs. At that time, he had like a sinus thing too, so I was buying the white handkerchiefs and I would, I knew exactly before he thinks it, I am, I should be already ready. When he lands, I already have the plugs for power. I, I studied the man because I knew what I was serving. Amen. So when I, when, when I'm actually nice to, to, to my guys, ah, <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, the cost, the cost is high. The cost is high. Not because he's a tyrant or anything. It's just you put yourself in a place where you've never been. And I said, Papa, I have a seed. I took these bundles and I placed them. The man never even looked at it. <laughs> I was so distressed. <laughs> said very good he was on his phone he didn't even look he didn't sit there and say rabasha he has oil never did that i'm telling you before the lord the lord jesus is my witness he was laying on his bed he said very good listen to me this is the last time you ever give at this point Amen. Mm, that's that's all he said he didn't ask me what it was I put it there thought, thinking my pile will impress him. <laughs> he said, this is the last time you will ever give at this point. I thought I would get oil poured on me. Nothing. And that's all he said. When he was about to leave, it was Grammy week. I just got nominated. He took his Galasso suit that I, I loved. I was eyeing. He told me, take this one. He actually gave me two. And I took them. They are still in my clothes. I don't even wear them. They are just like a relic in there. They are just, sometimes if I want to catch some fire, and I leave it there. It's not something I wear. It's just in there. Now, what I'm telling you is true before God. Amen. And I left. From that day, one day I just realized, hey, things I used to struggle for, they are, they are actually non-existent. Then I had to remember, what did I do? Then it hit me, the de declaration of the prophet. I tipped the scale with everything that I had. When the woman was approached by Elijah. It was her last cake. If you eat, you die, you feed the prophet, you live. This is why giving is a test of your faith. You didn't hear what I said. This is why giving is evidence of your love, your trust, and your faith in God. Your love, because whoever you love, you would not withhold anything. Mm -hmm. Your trust, because you know God's ability. Amen. Your faith, because you know you are giving because you already have more than enough. Amen. So if you don't have these three things in your giving, you are actually trying to rob God. Mm. Some people give because of their need. Mm. They don't give out of these three principles. 
Andrew was like, Andrew's about to be 15 now, so minus nine. Andrew was small, and I gave everything I have, everything. The prophet is the one who booked my flight back. I didn't even have, he's the one who paid my flight to go back home. Everything. So hear me by the Spirit of God. What are you doing to tip the scale? The devil has infiltrated the church so much that you feel like you're doing your pastor a favor when you give. Thank God some of us don't take offerings. God made us multi, 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 multi. You know what? So I don't need to take a salary from anyone. I don't need anything like that. Thank God. Amen. What if we actually depended on you to give? For our families to eat. Yet we are the ones praying for you, fasting for you. We are not doing anything but interceding for you. What are we supposed to eat? Prayer. <laughs> Pay mortgages with tongue. You see how wicked that is. Your giving is your test of true love to God. And that's what tips the scale. Amen. Abraham has everything in life. God denies him a son. The son becomes so valuable to him because that's who he's going to leave his legacy with. Then God gives him a son. He rejoices he has a son. Then God says, give me your son. Sacrifice him to me. Abraham now has to give up what he has been praying for. But God wanted him to tip the scale so that he can become not just the father of Isaac, mm. but to become the father of nations. Amen. If you're not willing to plant this one, how are you going to harvest a nation? Give him to me. Mm. On, Papa. For God to harvest us, he took his son Jesus, seeded him to himself. So he can tip the scale. I remember this, this you all know uh, Mama Brian, that's my mom. I remember in Victory Boulevard, Mama Brian was praying for one of my brothers. And she had been praying, interceding, interceding and praying. And I looked at Mama and I said, one day I looked at Mama. She was in tears. I said, Mama, do you trust me? And Dad was with her. I said, do you trust me? She said, yes, I trust you. You know I trust you. Mama, are you sure you trust me? She said, I am 100% sure. I am 100% telling you the truth. I trust you. I said, Mama. Take this seed, go on the altar, put it there, and see what will happen. She took the amount of money I told her. She went and laid it before God. This is a true story. You know my brother Chance. Yes. You know Chance. If you're looking for a house, see Chance. He's the guy. Amen. Amen. His mother and father put it there. I told them, tell God what you want. They told God what they want. I said, go home. Next week, my brother started fasting. He met his wife, but he was not married that time, but he was interested in her. They are fasting, praying together. Oh, everything is just moving. It's like, what is going on? <laughs> my guy made a 360 in a matter of a week or two. Complete, something that had been there for years. Mm. Why? Because the pines tipped the scale. Mm. Did what uh, um, Job good. did. That's good. Perhaps my children have done something against her. me doing this, I'm tipping the skill, the skill. When God came to Sodom and Gomorrah to see it, the skill had been so tipped that he could not believe that the scale went the wrong way like that. He said, "Nah, I had to come and see what these people are doing. What are you doing to tip the skill?
I'm not telling you this because I need your money. I don't. It's a privilege for you to give. Amen. Amen. It's a privilege for you to give. Big time. Amen. Amen. It is. Giving is not about the amount. It's about your heart. What does that mean? If my heart, in my heart, let's say, in my account, God gave me 10 billion. But in my heart, I give God two mites. I'm evil. Because my capacity can do more. But I chose to give nothing. The woman with the two mites gave all she had. She didn't take a little bit of what she had. She gave all that she had. What, impress, what impresses God is your ability to give to your fullest capacity. Amen. Not to empty your account. Even though emptying your account by faith, if God commands you, yes. Don't do it by blind faith. Come on. Amen. It's not a pyramid scheme. It's not. God has to speak to you. There are people who have come to me, prophet, this is all with a suitcase, sir, this is all in our account. And I say, I pray for them and I take the suitcase and give it back to them. Ah, oh, why? No, you made a foolish decision. Next week, you have mortgage coming. Why are you going to feed your children? Take it. You already gave it to God. You don't give this way. Where you are, you give this way. I advise them. This is something that God is... I wish you people would see this behind the scenes stuff. I do it all the time. Somebody will come, uh, uh, um, uh, where's, um, what's her name? Short hair. Maya. My daughter Maya yesterday, she came, was it yes, the day before yesterday? She came, Papa, I have this seed. I just want things to change. I said, Amen. Take it. You need it. It's true. I didn't take it from her. Yeah. I'm a spiritual man primarily. It's not about taking. Yeah. If I take and you didn't give the right way, you may resent me yet I have to correct you. Because if it doesn't work out, you say I gave my money to these prophets. No, you didn't. You gave it to God. Here on earth, men receive tithe. There in heaven, he receives them. Yeah. Amen. You're not giving to me, you're giving to him. I'm just receiving, but it's my duty to train you to give. I'm always impressed when, when, uh, uh, when the senior prophet is doing, uh, Papa Angel's doing um, missions week. I'll call in and drop something and say, ah, and it touches me. Love, he sent this much. It touches me because I know from the 3,000 I could give and what I can give now, it's like night and day. Amen. Are you understanding what I'm saying? All this, all this I am telling you all this I am telling you so that you can learn how to tip the scale. Amen. How to tip the scale. I want you to give to God. But you are going to do it prayerfully. You are going to do it what? Prayerfully. prayerfully. You're going to find triple five, mm. triple grace, Amen. whether it's five cents and 55 nickels, whether it's five billion and 55 whatever, your five, 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 your triple grace, whatever it is, I want you to go before God prayerfully. If you will not pray, Please don't give. I repeat, if you will not pray, please don't give. Go buy McDonald's, go buy shirt, at least you'll get something. If you give without praying and being sincere before God, you are wasting your money. Please don't give. Give if you are ready to actually commit to your prayer in truth and sincerity before the Lord. 
tonight I'm going to pray with you and I'm I'm going to lead you in a simple but important prayer. Whenever God is going to work on you or what we love to say uh, in America is deal with you. Whenever God is going to mold you, shape you, your best, best act or response. Let me say that correctly. Whenever God is going to mold you and work on you, your best response is the act of surrender. If you resist him, you prolong the process. Please be tired of being tired. Not every delay is demonic. The children of Israel went around the same mountain for 40 years. Now the truth is they were not going around a mountain mountain. That's a figure of speech. You see, the Bible says you are supposed to move the mountain. But they never moved the mountain. They went around the mountain. You can't take shortcuts with God. You either go through it or you don't. If you try to find a way around it, you will perish. For 40 years, they were just dying out. Because nobody noticed what they were doing was wrong. For 40 years they are falling like flies. That the children who had nothing to do with what they did are the ones that are going the right way. They stood in God's way. Please don't stand in God's way. You cannot overcome God when you wrestle with God. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I surrender my body. I surrender, I surrender my body. body. I surrender my soul. I surrender, I surrender my soul. And I surrender my spirit. And I, and I surrender, surrender my spirit. In your capable hands. In your, your capable hands. hands. Lord, in your hands I am safe. Lord, Lord in, in your hands, hands I am I safe. safe. Your word says that no one can pluck me from your hand. Your, your word, word says, says that no, no one, one can, can pluck, pluck me from, from your hand. hand. Father, I know this is the solid ground. Father, Father I, know I know this is, is the solid, solid ground. ground. Where you have planted me. Where, where you, you have, have planted, planted me. me. I may not understand it. I may, I may not, not understand it. it. I may not comprehend all that is happening. I may, I may not comprehend all, all that is happening. happening. But I know you are with me. But, but I, I know you are with me. Even in the fire you are with me. Even, Even in the, the fire you are with me. Even through the valley of the shadow of death you are with me. Even through the valley of the shadow of death you are with me. I know all things are working for my good. I know all things are working for my good. Father, I surrender to you father, father I, I surrender, surrender to you change me change me transform me transform me make me what you desire for me to be make me what you desire for me to be conform me to the image of your son Jesus conform me to the image of your son Jesus forgive me for resisting you forgive me for resisting you father today Father, today by your spirit by your spirit change me change me Cause me to become heavy in the spirit. Cause, Cause me, me to, to become, become heavy, heavy in, in the, the spirit. spirit. May my presence tip the scale of situations. May my, May my presence tip the scale of situations. situations. That where I will be, there will be blessing. That where I will be, there will be blessing. If there were curses, there will be broken. If there were curses, there will be broken. If there were limitations, there will be broken. If there were limitations, there will be broken. If there was witchcraft, it will be broken. If there was witchcraft, it will be broken. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. Because of
of the weight of your glory upon me because, because of, of the weight of your, your glory upon, upon me use me to change situations use, use me, me to, to change, change situations. situations not only in my life not, not only in, in my life, life but in those who are around me but, but in, in those, those who are, are around, around me. me father i surrender father, father I, surrender. i surrender i'm going to give you 30 seconds to ask god to help you as you surrender lift your voice and speak to the lord jesus Father God Rane me sata la bahaya ke de besha Ronia me le ne se ke le me su kala mahaya Rute le me so tolo mo saka de baha zuke Rapa so tolo mo shikata bahaya Rotolo mo sinana mahaye katebe Rima so tolo bo ripate le besika Ratoto le mande te bere Ricato ste ende le piria Lorante le mere poroto Reme so ka parata la bashika zoto lo mosita la bahaya rapateleme rukapaleta le masu miria falata lete likro sovete marute le mesa luta akia remeso te belebe suta ramonste envra masupete le beheza in the name of jesus in the name of jesus some of you may need to watch this again yes hallelujah Some of you may need to observe your life and start thanking God because it's the Lord's doing and it's beautiful in his sight and he will make you beautiful he will beautify you in his time Amen Amen, Amen. So surrender yourself to him Amen See your children come back to God Amen See your husband see your wife see your family see those whom you love come back to God Amen, Amen. He's able but we have to let him have his way When you surrender you're saying have your way. Yes. Do what you desire. Don't just say it with your lips, mean it in your heart. Yes. And the Lord Jesus will bless you. Yes. God bless you. Shalom. Amen. Shalom.